All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the input dialog. And for my money, the input dialog may actually be the most useful function to a lot of engineering students. So let's go ahead and talk about why. Um, to do that, we need an equation. So let's start with, uh, let's say acceleration. All right, so let's go ahead and open up a script. So here we're gonna type, you know, clear CLC, um, and we're gonna do just sort of a, a bare input. All right, so let's say we wanna start by asking the user for some information. Let's go ahead and save this while I think for a minute. So this is gonna be MATLAB underscore. This is gonna be the input DLG explanation. Again, don't save this as uh, input DLG, okay? Then your input dialog function won't work. So we're gonna ask somebody for, I don't know, uh, siblings equals, and then we're gonna have input DLG. All right, open and close parentheses. Here's our input dialog, that's our function, so now we have to ask. So this is a lot like the input function. We're gonna ask a question, that's the only thing we're gonna give input dialog. Um, so we're gonna say, how many brothers and or sisters do you have? Question mark. All right, so that's it. Now we've already saved it, so we can go ahead and run it. When I run it, here's what happens. There's a dialog box that pops up. Where it pops up is just sort of random on the computer. Um, the text is kind of small. Yeah, I know, but that is what it is. So here's what we have. We have how many do you have? So let's say two. Um, actually, I care for one, so we'll say one. Um, now we see that siblings equals a cell array. Now for a lot of you, this may be the first time you've encountered a cell array. So let's talk about what that is. If you look up here, there's several different types of arrays. So I'll say num equals one. I'll say word equals example, and you can see now these are the three main types of arrays that we have in MATLAB. We have a numeric array, which looks like sort of a, I don't know, a window pane, but it's supposed to denote an array. We have uh, an array that is a character array, contains words. Uh, basically, there's a difference between the number seven and the character seven, so um, we'll have a more, and there is a more in-depth conversation about that when we talk about how to assign variables, so you can look at the past video. Um, and then we have now what's called a cell array. A cell array is an array that allows us to combine all of those things, all right? So imagine an array has positions. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and go ahead and open up num, and we'll just grow, or we'll add to it. So one, two, three, and four. All right, so this is the variable editor in MATLAB. <coughs> so now I have four positions, one, two, three, and four. Now they contain the numbers one, two, three, and four, so we can say in position one, we have a one. In position two, we have a two. In position three, we have a three. This is a numeric array. When I open up a character array, okay, I have the word. And when we ask for information from the character array, the first position contains an E, the second position contains an X, the third position contains an A. A character array saves strings of information, like characters. A cell array actually allows us to save anything we want in different positions. So we can have a number in position one, we can have a whole numeric array in position two, we can have characters in position three, we can have a story like the text of an entire book in position four. That's what a character array is for. But it, it was important to tell you that because it's important for you to know that that cell array that we had, and we should probably go ahead and leave that open at least, um, that cell array that we had, it says that it saved a cell but in that cell, you can see we have a string. Okay, so if I wanna get that number out to use it as something, we actually need to turn that string into a number. So we'd use string to num, open, close parentheses. Then I'd simply pass it the name. So let's just go ahead and say copy the word siblings. We'll come down here, we'll paste it, and we run it. And now we have string to num siblings. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it's in a character array. So I have to use curly bracket, open, curly bracket, one, close curly bracket. Now I have the number one. So let me go ahead and run this. And as a matter of fact, let's just add that in here. We'll say uh, siblings, underscore saved, underscore as, underscore num. Okay, and then we're just gonna do this. So I'm gonna copy this command because it's gonna be the same no matter where I have it. I just want it in my code, I'm gonna paste it in. Good, so now I have, when the user supplies the number of siblings, and I have the number of siblings saved as a number. So now I can use it in calculation. Now obviously the number of siblings you have saved as a number, that's not really all that important. But in the next video that we cover, I'm gonna show you how this is, input dialog, is quite possibly the best function for engineering students. So let's go ahead and run this. All right, so we cleared everything. We get that prompt up, let's say four, okay? And now I have siblings saved as four, and I have siblings saved as num. 
four. So this is basically just the uh, the rudimentary input dialog. Okay, in our next video, we're going to cover an input dialog that prompts the user with several different questions. I'm going to show you how to use that to solve uh, pretty important equations. Uh, we'll start off with a pretty canned example. Uh, and again, if this was helpful, please hit the like. And in order to see all of our future videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. So till next time.